Um, for the sake of this class, Sarah, to answer your question, how to decide which one's the front view, we literally have an arrow pointing to the front view, like in all of these. You'll follow that. Um, but the more that you do this, and I'm not expecting you to be like, oh, I just, I'm super comfortable with this, and I totally know how to um, jump right in and figure out what the front view is. The more you do it, the more you'll naturally just be able to pick out the front view. You guys are like one class session into this. Y'all are a few days of online sketching uh, into this, and I fully don't expect you to look at an object and be like, boom, I just glanced at it and I totally know what the front view is. Um, so for the sake of all of these projects, that arrow is pointing to what the front view will be. <laughs> so, uh, and that I did not, uh, I did not say in class last period, and I guess the videos maybe didn't say it. Um, but yeah, so uh, for the sake of all of these projects that we're sketching, it'll have an arrow pointing to the front view for you. Um, and then based on that being your front view, then you figure out the top view and the side view. Um, one of the biggest things that I can say is uh, to kind of, let's see if we can go, eh, this is a little bigger. Once you get that front view drawn, um, I'm going to try to... I, I use this all the time and I don't know why it's not working this uh, nowadays. Maybe it'll work here. No, see, look what happens when I try to draw my line comes way over there. I don't know why. Um, anyway, once you've got that view drawn, we have grid lines, which is nice. We're not always going to draw on grid lines like this. Well, this is just starting off where you can count the grids and, you know, you figure it out. But absolutely use those construction lines where... Um, here we go, make it a little bigger here. But from here, project that over. And you know, this feature right here, it is visible in that side view. Just draw lines and project that straight over. Draw this, project that straight over. It's hidden because it's behind the scenes over there. So that would be a hidden line. You know, all of these features, absolutely. I do want you guys to use construction lines. And it's a, it's a bit of a bummer that we're skipping over chapter three because chapter three is going to be your first time to do this or would be your first time to do this with um, uh, no grid lines, like you actually measuring things out. Um, if you wanted to take it, uh, you know, a little step further and do chapter three, I love getting giving extra credit. If you guys want to make any, uh, you know, extra effort, you're welcome to do some of the projects in chapter three where we would be sitting normally at a... Um, we would normally be sitting at a uh, drafting table with a scale and triangles and all of that. And you don't, you can be at your kitchen table. It doesn't really, <coughs> your dining room table. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be an official drafting table, but um, that might be something if you want to uh, try it out that you could do. But, you know, you're always going to be um, less uh, confident, uh, make more mistakes, and, and all of that when you're first starting out. This is brand new stuff to you guys. I don't expect you to sketch two pa pages and be experts at this. These two pages, shockingly, what, what's kind of funny is the projects from, you know, sheet one, sheet two is a little bit harder, sheet three is a little bit harder, sheet four is a little harder. Typically, not always, but generally speaking, number one on the page is the easiest, number nine on the page is the hardest. That's not always true, but generally. Um, but what's funny is these first two pages, which out of the six, these are the easiest pages that you guys are going to have. These are going to be the hardest ones for you because you've never done it before. So as you continue going, even though <clears throat> the objects are getting harder, you're getting more into the groove of like, oh, cool, well, I know how to do... You know, I drew the front view. Now I'm going to project this up to the top view. Um, and Sulane, I see your um, comment. Let me read it. Uh, I have trouble with the dash lines. Had to look over my drawing twice to make sure I didn't forget anything. That is totally normal, Sulane. It is, um, uh, that, that is totally normal. You're brand new to this. Um, what I would do, what I would recommend, and this is this really, this is how I, how I typically do it is when you're first doing these things, only project over the visible lines. Once you're done with all the visible lines, like, okay, in that side view, I know this is visible and I know that's visible, I've, I've figured that out, then come in and be like, oh, okay, so this back line right here, I would not see that from the side view, but if I can project that over, now I can project all my hidden lines. 
now I can take this little piece that's kind of under the surface, I wouldn't see it from the top, and I can project that up to the top view. Um, yeah, so breaking it down like that, that might help. We all have different learning styles. We all have different uh, kind of ways that we, we take in information. So what works for one person may not work for another person, but hands down across the board, what's gonna work for, for everybody is practice doing this over and over and over again. The more you do it, the more you're gonna get comfortable with it, the more second nature this is gonna to get to be. So, <laughs> I would send you, I have a bag of erasers in my office, girl. I'll send you some. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely you wanna use your pencil for these, for sure. Um, so, um, anyway, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay, so uh, that's a wonderful question. And this is definitely, this is what we're learning right now. I would say that is the most descriptive view because it's a funky shape. I can see that it's a funky shape. I can see that there's this weird little lip thing hanging out over here. I can see that this plane is lower down than this plane. I can just see this overall kind of weird shape to it. When I look at this in the top view, that's a bunch of rectangles. I have no idea. Nothing about the top view tells me that there's a little lip hanging over. Nothing tells me that this surface and that surface are on two different planes. Nothing tells me kind of the overall weird shape. And so um, if you want to look at it like that, just um... <laughs> thank you, sweetheart. So it's not the just... Yeah. Yeah, if you can only give me one view that's going to tell me the most information about this um, and, and the most information being like, that's a really weird shape and there's no other view that's going to let me know how funky this thing is with the little lip and the little thing and this is hanging down. This side view, you can tell there's a little cutout here, but the rest of it is just lines, just straight lines, just rectangles. I can tell in this view, there's something hidden. So I know something's going on behind the surface back there. I don't know what it is. I, I need the other view to fully describe this. I, I need three views to fully describe this thing. But I can tell there's something going on behind the scenes, but there are very few hidden lines in this view and I can get kind of that overall weird shape um, across in that view. So I don't know if that, yeah. Um, and I'm trying to read y'all's comments as I go. Since I only saw one video of him drawing a second problem, try doing it on my own, in my head. Yeah, and Sulane, one thing that, um, this is interesting um, that, that I have found over the years, um, the ability to visualize an object, like take, I can see that one sketch, that sketch is called an isometric, we'll be doing isometrics later, but that one sketch that we see, um, being able to take that and imagine this object rotating, like imagine that object rotating to the top and the side and being able to, that spatial re uh, uh, reasoning that, 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 uh, that it takes to, to look at that sketch of the object and rotate it, that comes very naturally to some people. So Sulane, you're saying you're in your head, you just imagined it as a 3D object, which it is when this thing is manufactured, it is a 3D object. So we're taking that isometric ske sketch and rotating it that is not something that comes naturally to everyone. It has nothing to yeah. do with your IQ. It's, you know, if, you, if you're not the person who can just visualize this thing as a 3D object and rotate that around in your head, it does not mean, has nothing at all to do with your IQ, your intelligence or anything. Some people see it and some people don't. And it's just a spatial reasoning thing. Um, <clears throat> so, like, I was trying to do a side view on the top view, and then I automatically see that as a different object. So for me, I would say it's easy for me to do that. And then I saw it sometimes in the bottom and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think I'm probably going to start with this one. Because when you do it, you know, it's like a joke, it's like kind of like a tunnel. Yeah.
-hmm. Yeah. And it's funny that uh, you're saying you visualize this thing in 3D. I've never heard of anybody talk about the circle as a tunnel, but that's totally what it is. And that's a very 3D way to look at it is just it's a tunnel going through this. So it's actually that's a fabulous word to use to describe it. Um, but um, it is, I would say the hardest part uh, for for people, even when they start getting down the, vis the visible lines and hidden lines, uh, I would say the hardest part is circles, actually arcs more so than circles because arcs you, you like what do you do with the center line and how do I do the hidden lines and and, and I know that that tends to be a little more uh, challenging so um, but I, I will say I have I have only and I've been doing this for what a mm, eight, 18 years now uh, I have only had one student who just never saw it never got it never just could not like like there was not all of the tools and the techniques and the things that we suggested just could not get it. Um, we uh, we did not have the 3D uh, videos that, that Doug made. He just made those this summer. Uh, that might have helped as well. But um, I, people, if it's not coming naturally to you right now, don't even worry about it. It will. The more you do this, the more natural this is going to feel for you. Um, this is, yeah. Did you have a question, Michael? Okay, I, that was such a good question. If you'll mute yourself, because I can hear my myself echo. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so that is a really good question, Michael. Um, and I'm going to repeat it because I'm recording this, and I don't know if the recording will hear that. But um, you were you were saying, um, for example, this one that's that's drawn here has no center lines to it, and wanting to know if the center lines are to people's discretion uh, or not. Um, I am going to, a center line only has to do with a circle or an arc. There is no circle and there is no arc. There's no hole being drilled through this. So there is no center line. Um, because I cannot sketch, um, I'm, I'm wondering, because I don't, I would normally go to the blackboard and, and draw some things for you. But I'm going to actually pull up AutoCAD. So y'all are going to get a, a little sneak preview of AutoCAD in here just because I'm not able to sketch these things. Uh, but I'll draw what I would want to draw on the board. Oh my gosh, I have to wait for AutoCAD to load, so this is going to take forever. Um, but uh, yeah, center lines are only there when you have um, the... Uh, uh, circles or arcs in the drawing. So I'm going to come in here. Let me get to. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I remember. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my God, Big G brings a lot of memories back. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm going to come in here. So this is AutoCAD sneak preview, um, and I'm going to draw some stuff. Um, I'm going to, we have layers in AutoCAD. We'll talk about all this. I am not teaching you AutoCAD right now. I'm just like, this is for lack of a, uh, 
a blackboard, I'm going to have to kind of do it this way. But let's say I've got a rectangle here. And that rectangle has, um, and I look at the top view, so I'll do the top view um, up here. Hold on. I don't know. Let's say that's the top view right here. If I were to see this top view and um, there were some hidden lines in here, so maybe I have a hidden line here. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so hard to do because I really just want to sketch right now. Um, let's say I've got a hidden line here and a hidden line here. So if I were to have a view like this, do y'all see the hidden lines? I know it's kind of hard with the black background or dark. Uh, I can go change that color real quick. Um, but uh, I've got a view like this. This is my top view. This could be any sort of shape. Like this could be so many different things. This could be uh, something like, um, uh, this could be, we're just gonna pretend it's like this. Uh, it could look like this from that bottom view. It could look like uh, it could look like this, and that would totally have two hidden lines projected up there. Um, it could look like let's see. It could look like this. It could have just a hole going through it, but it is a rectangle going through it, and so these two lines would project up as hidden lines. There's so many different uh, variations of ways that this thing could look, um, and, and, and it could be all kinds of stuff. It could be uh, another rectangle. It could look like this, for all I know. You know I, I won't know until I see all the views together, but all of these are making a top view that looks like this. But the minute we come in here and we put in a center line through the middle here, um, and this would extend past the edges. I'm being a little OCD about this, and I'm sorry. Y'all are going to realize that I've got issues. Um, but uh, I've got a center line through here. Now that center line tells me there is something that is, um, <laughs> there is something that is a round going on in here. I don't know what it is. That round could be uh, it could be a circle. Again, I, I won't know until I uh, come through here and actually see this thing uh, in the other views, but maybe it's this. And so I've got a... Um, uh, let's see, center. I've got a center mark through here. So it could be something like this. So these sides, of course, I'm, I don't have all this perfectly lined up, but this side right here would project up and be a hidden line. This side right here would project up and be a hidden line. But because I have a circle, this center line is projecting up and giving me a center line in that view. Because I see a center line in this view up top, I know that there is something that is round. Is it a circle? I don't know. Is it, um, you know, an arc? Um, let's see. Does it look like this? Maybe. I don't know. It could. It could look like this. If I have an arc, this is where arcs get a little tricky, is because when I put a center mark on an arc, a mark on an arc, um, whenever you have that center line right here, the arc only goes on this half, so I don't put a center line down here. I don't put a center line down there, so I just would delete that part. But um, so it could look like this. Maybe the edge of that arc projects up. This edge of this arc projects up. It's hidden, and then that center line projects up. So that this one really, really simple top view could be lots of different things. We don't know until we see the front view of it or whichever other view of it. But um, the fact that it has a center mark or a center line in it does let me know there's got to be something that is uh, round in there. It's got some kind of an arc or curve to it. Um, I would not have a center mark otherwise. 
Yeah, center lines are only for circles. You will never have a center line unless you have a circle or an arc. That is, it doesn't give you, it's not giving you the center of the object. It's giving you the center of a circle or an arc. So the only times you will ever have a center line is if it's an arc or a circle. Um, and the, so to draw a circle over here, let me change my layers. Uh, oops, not viewport. Um, when I have a, a, a circle like this, and then I'll draw an arc. Like that. These are the only two things that you will have a center line on. If you don't have a center line, which is the case in this guy right here, there was no center line because there's no circles. There's nothing round. There's no holes. There's no circles. There's no arcs being cut through this thing. So there are no center lines. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me pull it up. I'm going to pull it up in my book. My slideshow has it, but I have to go through all of them on the slideshow to get to it. Um, oh, I see what you're talking about. Yes. So let, let's let's go through the solutions. We are definitely going to get to that solution. Um, but to get there, I have to kind of go through on a slideshow, go through them all. So, uh, let's just go through this one we saw. Oh my gosh, that's very hard to see. Do you guys, does that look okay to you guys? Kind of. Okay. Uh, okay, this guy right here, we're going to walk through all of those, but, uh, Michael, we're definitely going to get to the one, and, uh, uh, all of you guys, Justin, um, that are saying that 2.2 figure five, we're definitely going to get to those. Um, uh, this one right here, this always reminds me of um, Angry Birds. This looks like the pig to me in Angry Birds in kind of a Picasso kind of way. Uh, but this one, uh, there's a whole lot going on here. And if you just look at what's going on, uh, there's a ton of center lines. One thing to keep in mind is anytime you have, I'll flip back over here uh, and let's just do undo until this is a circle. Anytime you have a circle, when it looks like a circle is the only time you're going to have a center mark. A center mark is the one that looks like a plus sign or kind of a bullseye right in the middle of it. Um, I said bullseye, I mean crosshair or like whatever, I don't know. <laughs> um, but anytime you have it where it looks like a circle or an arc, you're going to have the the crosshair kind of bullseye thing. Um, but when you project it into other views, a circle will always have hidden, center, hidden. That is just kind of like a pattern. It is representing every circle that you have, you're going to project up. There's a hidden line. Project up the other side. That's a hidden line. Project up the center line. There's the center. So you will always have hidden, center, hidden in all of these. So when I come back to this, take this circle right here. Imagine that as a pattern. I've got hidden, center, hidden. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a terrible artist, so that never worked for me. <laughs> if I tried to draw faces and bodies with uh, circles, they looked like circle people. Um, but so we take this, this same uh, circle, project it up. There's my hidden center hidden. Project this circle up. There's my hidden center hidden. Project both of these circles. They're in line with each other, so they're collinear. Um, but so they share that same center line, everything about them, they're the exact same size. Project that over, hidden, center, hidden. So circles kind of take care of it themselves. If you can kind of get that pattern or recognize that pattern, you will always have hidden, center, hidden when you project a circle into the side view 
or into what Sulaim called the, the tunnel view, like the tunnel. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Every tunnel is going to have hidden, center, hidden. Uh, sorry to keep saying that. I just love it. I love, love, love that. Um, and then, so now we have this little feature over here. Project that over to the side, and it's hidden. So now we have hidden, center, hidden. And then this extra line is the hidden for that back corner here. I've got a visible line. There would have been a hidden line if this had not lined up with this. Notice how they're exactly in the same line. When you have multiple lines that are competing for that same view, you know, that, that they're in the exact same line, they're collinear or whatever, um, there's, there's a hierarchy of lines. Even if you had drawn this by hand, if you had drawn dashes for a hidden line, when you draw your visible line over that, you just delete it. You just covered up the dashes. You don't even see them. So don't even waste your time drawing dashes. When you are looking at lines, the hierarchy is visible wins, period, no matter what. If you have a visible line, don't even draw the other lines. Visible wins. If it's between a center line and a hidden line, hidden lines win. So center lines, they're the lowest man on the totem pole. They're the first ones out when there's a competition. Visible always wins. That is always your number one most important line. But between a hidden line and a center line, the hidden line's going to win. Um, so we project this over. The little ears on the pig, those come up. It's visible here. If you look up, you can see that that's visible in the side view all the way. But from the front view, it's you know it's a, it's smooth right here. There wouldn't be any line right there. So in the back of that is where we have those hidden lines. This right here is hidden, and this right here is hidden. Top of the circle hidden. Line. Um, Saji, I'm reading this, and I I don't know that I'm fully understanding what I'm reading. Uh, the hidden line on top of the circle hidden lines. Represent. On this. Oh, here. Are we still on the same? Uh, you're seeing windows, and I'm not seeing windows. Over here? Okay. Up here? Um. That represents, this guy represents, if we come all the way over here, there is this, this edge, this corner kind of happening right here. You can't see that from the side view, it's blocked. I mean, if you were to hold up the 3D model and look at it, you would not see that line at all. But it's there, it's happening behind the scenes. And so that's what gets projected over into uh, the hidden line. So if we're looking at this, this side view is looking at it this way. So. Truly, in the side view, all that I would see is like this box, this slope, which actually just looks like a rectangle. It's weird, like it slopes, any kind of uh, angles like that just look like a rectangle in the side view. We would not see what's going on back here because it's happening behind the scenes, but we still have to represent it. So that's what we're showing right here is uh, that, that guy in the dashed line right there. Yeah, I hope that helped. And you guys, let me know if it doesn't help. And if I'm not describing it in a way, I love, oh, good, Saji. Um, <laughs> I love class participation, and I just absolutely am excited that you guys are so active and talkative. Um, feel free. Like, uh, I think that it was uh, Sulang who popped in and said, side view. If I'm not seeing it, I would love you guys helping each other, so for sure. This one right here, he's pretty straightforward. There's a lot going on in the side view. So again, I've got a circle. When I see it like a circle, it has a center mark on it. So it's got that little bullseye, that little crosshair right here. Um, yeah, Sarah, so uh, um, this is, uh, don't look at the line weight on these, Sarah. These, these are weird and big and blurry. The only thing that would be really big and bold is your uh, visible line, or yeah, your visible lines. Hidden lines and center lines should both be a lot lighter weight and they would match each other as far as how thick they are. So I've got a circle here. I know I need to put a center mark where this, uh, uh, where it looks like a circle. Project it over. I've got hidden, center, hidden. 
project it up, hidden, center, hidden. So I'm seeing that pattern over and over again. The thing is, when this thing dips down right here, it's on the same surface as the top of my hidden line. So I have two hidden lines on top of each other. So that'll just be one. They share a hidden line over there. <coughs> this, is, this comes over as visible. This one comes over as hidden. And then the top is visible. And then on the top view, I feel like the top is the easiest one of all of these views. You can tell this is visible and you can tell that is visible. You can see all of those lines from the top view. But once, I think the hardest part typically that I see uh, people have a hard time wrapping their head around is what to do with those circles and center lines. And if you can just start to recognize there's a pattern to it. Every circle, it has hidden center hidden to it. Every circle, when it looks like a circle, that's when you have, really this right here is just two center lines. It's a long, short, long, crossed by, long, short, long. It's just two center lines crossing each other. One's giving the x-axis and one's giving the y-axis right through the center. Um, let's see. Holy moly, there's a lot going on in this one. Um, here we have, uh, it's our first time to really see an arc. And so normally a center mark, you know, has the extra line that would be going up here. Um, and, uh, but because this is an arc and not a circle, we're gonna erase off the top half of that. So it's just the bottom half of this. Um, I've got a circle in the side view, so I can see that's gonna project over long, short, long, all the way through this sucker. Um, the bottom dip of this arc is not visible from the side view, but I still have to show it. So I'm gonna come right over here to the side view and that's gonna be hidden. I've got this cut out here Project that over, that's gonna be hidden. Um, I do have a center line up here and typically I would um, uh, project the center line into the side view, but when I project it into the side view, it uh, competes with a visible line. So because it competes with that visible line, it's out of there, we don't draw it. One big reason we don't draw it is, I'm gonna come over to AutoCAD real quick, if I had this uh, view, let's see if I can do it. No. Remember I had, um, this was down here. Like that. Uh, when it was down here like that, and if I were to draw this thing in the side view, uh, let's see. This is so much easier to do on the board. Uh, I have the side view over here, let's say. I don't know, we're just pretending this is the side view. So this, the top of this would project over as a hidden line. So I would figure out, you know, where the top of this is and I would say, okay, well now this is, that's where the hidden line is. That would go all the way through here as a hidden line. But I would normally project my center line stri uh, straight over. Um, but the thing is, if I did it, if this center line were to project right over to here, I would have a center line on top of this. We don't want that. Uh, visible line would win. Another thing is center lines always hang out past the edge. It's the only line that hangs out past the edge. So when we get ready to print this thing, um, I just want to show this guy, monochrome preview. When you get ready to print this thing, you don't want these flaps hanging out of the bottom. So that's another reason. Not only did the visible line win in that competition, but even if you tried to draw the center line, center lines hang out past the edge. And the last thing in the world you wanna do is confuse the viewer and have these flaps just hanging out of the bottom. That is really, really confusing. This is gonna make for a lot of mistakes whenever it comes time to manufacture this product. So um, we definitely do not want to even represent that center line at all. So going back to this guy, normally we would project that over it's competing with a visible line so we don't want to draw it and we don't want to have flaps hanging off of the edges 
Um, this arc right here, um, it's, it's visible here and here. There is, you have to take the center line, project it straight up. This is a little confusing though, because this box, this cutout that comes out of here, it has its own center lines. And so this is where it's really important. Remember we talked about circles always have hidden center hidden. When you look at just the top view of this, you're gonna assume that there might be a circle coming right through the middle of this, because I see a center line, except that center line is talking about this arc that's actually visible. These two hidden lines are not for anything that is circular. So um, that's why we need all these views to fully describe this object. Now, the tricky thing here, I don't know if you guys uh, played much with that miter line, that 45 degree miter line that comes through here <clears throat> is actually crazy awesome. It is so super cool. When you take any feature right here, so we're gonna take this hole, that's this circle that's drilled through here. We've already shown it in the front view. When we take it up to that miter line, right where it touches the miter line, you stop and you just make a turn, a 90 degree angle. You just right where, wherever it touches that miter line, the 45 degrees, stop and turn. And there it is right there. Take that center line, go all the way up. Once it touches that miter line, stop and turn. And it projects right over there. The edge of this, Go all the way up, right where it touches that miter line, stop, turn, and there it is right here. It, um, it, uh, it's, it's weird to use it first, but that miter line is so completely cool. Um, it, it's, it's so completely cool when you start using this. What's awesome about this is in theory, I'm not saying you should do this, but in theory, you could draw these objects Oh, good. Um, there you could draw all of these objects only drawing, only measuring two views, whether it's the top view or the um, side view. You would draw the front view, project over to the side view, for example. Draw in your miter line. This whole entire third view can be drawn just using construction lines. I can draw a construction line from here to here here to here. I'm getting all of these visible lines in. I figured out where all my hidden lines are going from the bottom to the top. My center line comes here. Um, I, I know how wide this thing is. I don't know how deep it is, but if I were to draw that side view, I could measure how the depth in this side view, then I can take this line, project it all the way up. Oops, my mouse won't go that far. Uh, all the way up, stop, make a turn. It goes right there. Take this one, go all the way up, touch that miter line, stop, make a turn. I have just project, projected the depth of this because I already drew it in the side view. I'm using the side view to project, using that miter line, I'm using the side view to project to the top view. Then I can take this, project it over, and I've just drawn the entire top view completely based on just the side view and the front view. So that's what's really cool. If you're doing this right, and I'm not saying that this is the way that you absolutely have to do it. If you wanna measure when you're doing this, if you wanna measure how big this is, okay, that's fine. <laughs> We're all gonna do it differently. There's no right or, uh, well, let's say, I say this in AutoCAD all the time, and I don't know that it's exactly true here. Uh, but generally speaking, there's no right or wrong way to do this. There's actually a wrong way to do it. If you're using the wrong measurements, then yeah, totally, there's a wrong way to do it. But as long as you're using the right measurements, do it how you see it. We all see this a little bit differently. Um, that miter line is crazy and weird, but once you get used to it, it is so cool. It is like, it's such a, such a useful tool is just being able to just hit that line just make a 90 degree turn, turn to the left, and you, you've got it. Or vice versa, you can take it from the top view, hit that miter line right where it touches, drop it down, and come down and project those features. So, um, yeah, I really would encourage you guys to, on these next sketches, try to use those lines. Uh, well, just, uh, yeah. Uh, 
Um, now, when you're saying the depth of this little triangle that's being taken out of here, do you mean how far back it goes through there? Is that what you mean when you say depth? Yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Um, for, for this, I can see where you're wanting to put in some sort of center line to just denote like this is this is the center of the, the bottom of the, the triangle. Um, but the same way that you drew it, we know how wide it is. It's two units wide and it's two units tall. So that's, that's all that you would do. And when you're doing this, I mean, on these, we're just doing sketches, but when we get to chapter five, we're gonna be putting real dimensions in there. So you will actually have like a dimension that'll say two and you know, a height that says two, we'll be putting actual dimensions on these. For now, you know, we're just counting some squares on a grid. Um, and so somebody looking at yours, we don't have the dimensions, but they can look at yours and see, oh, on the grid, that was two units wide. Um, they know where the center of it is because they can count that it's four over here and four over here. Um, and so they would be looking at the dimensions, in this case, counting the squares on your grid paper. But we would be very specific about that um, as far as when it comes time to do that. Um, let's go look at the answers of this. One tricky thing is, this is our first time to see this, we have a concentric circle and arc. Concentric mean, meaning they share that same center point. So I've got the concentric uh, uh, circle and arc. They share the same center mark. So when you draw this, you're actually gonna draw it pretty much for the outer one. I'm gonna show you how to do this in AutoCAD just real quick. I know this is weird. I keep going over to AutoCAD, but I would do this on the board. <laughs> this is me sketching on the board. Uh, let's see, so I'm gonna draw a circle. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. I'm going to draw a circle. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to draw the arc first. I'm going to do it like that. Okay, there's an arc. I'm going to draw a circle. And these are concentric. So I've got, you know, maybe... This is going to go straight down, something like this. So I've got a concentric circle and a concentric arc. Uh, you know, they're sharing that same center point. The way I would do this in AutoCAD is um, if they were two circles, you could just do one center mark. In AutoCAD, because it's an arc in a circle, I've got one center mark for that circle. And then I've got one center mark for the arc. And then I'm going to delete. See, I don't need this to go all the way as long as the other ones. Like, really, these are all equally linked. They're all hanging out past that arc. I don't need it down here, though. So I'm going to delete that and just have my little shorter one that goes a little bit past that circle. If it were two concentric circles, Uh, like this. You know, something like that where there's two concentric circles, then when I do the um, center mark for it, I just do one the outermost and that way it goes all the way to the outer edge there everything else it fully covers the center circle so I'm really just putting the center mark on the outer one so just to show you kind of two different ways that you would handle drawing those center marks um, looking at that now coming back to this you can see these lines are a lot longer because they went out to the um, <clears throat> the outer arc which had a bigger radius Smaller diameter, this one's a little bit shorter. It's just going a little bit past that circle. So when I'm looking at this, 
projected into the top view, I see a line, you know, this right here, just see a little crease right here. I see a line for that outer arc. In the center, I see short, or I see, I would normally see hidden, center, hidden. Problem is I see three hiddens and that's because this little point on that triangle right there, project it straight up, it's right on top of the same center line from that circle going right through the center of this thing. So remember we talked about the hierarchy of lines, that poor little center line is the last one. Yeah, the circle does uh, mask the triangle, um, really the edges right here, that's hidden and that's hidden. They both would be hidden projecting that up into the top view. You would have seen a hidden line for the circle. If the circle weren't there, you would see the hidden line from the triangle. So they share a hidden, hidden line going all the way up the edge of the circle and um, the edge of that triangle share, share a, a hidden line, but the triangle's hidden line uh, takes precedence over the center line of the circle in that arc. So the center line's out in the top view. We don't have a center line at all. Projecting this over to the side, I feel like this one's not as hard. You can see obviously that with that, that point right here, it's happening behind the scenes. And so that just is a basic hidden line here, visible here. We would normally have center hidden, or I'm sorry, hidden center hidden we have hidden, center, except hidden is right at the same place as my visible, visible wins. Even if you tried to draw a hidden and a visible together, you would not see your hidden because the visible would cover it up. And then this top is just projected straight over. So I feel like this one is a good one because it covers a lot of stuff in a pretty simple, straightforward way. We're dealing with concentric circle and arc and how they share a center mark. We're dealing with the fact that uh, we definitely see the hierarchy of lines. We've got a visible that's covering up a hidden. We've got a hidden that took over a center. Uh, we've got two different objects sharing those same center uh, hidden lines. So uh, I, I, I like this project. I think it's a really good one to take some really important concepts and put it, put it down in a more of a straightforward way. Uh, Sarah, when we get to not having grid lines, you're going to struggle with different shapes. I don't think you will. I think the more you do, because you've still got four more pages of this. <laughs> you've got six pages total. Um, you're going to get this down. Of course, this is this is different. This is a struggle. It's it's, it's weird and it's, it's new for you guys. By the time you get to the last sheet, y'all are going to be shocked at how much easier this is for you because you've gone through, it's the same concepts. The shapes might get harder, but you're getting the concepts down. Yeah, I think that's the one everybody's talking about. So we'll get to that one for sure. Um, but my slide only goes in a certain order and I, I do want to cover these things. By the time we get to that one, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally get that. So uh, I will definitely spend time on number five on the on two point two. This one looks like a hot hot mess, and I totally acknowledge that. Here we go. If we have the hidden line from that arc comes straight across, we would have projected the center line, but it competes with the visible line, so we're not going to. We've got the hidden little back flap here, so it uh, shows hidden here. We have two circles, they're the same diameter, they're collinear, they're, um, they share that same center, um, center point. So when they project over the side, we see they share that everything, you know, they're right on top of each other. So we see that same pattern, hidden, center, hidden. We've got this little cutout, it's hidden in this view. So from these two views, it's okay. <laughs> The top is when it gets to be kind of a hot mess, but again, if you're using that miter line, projecting those circles, hidden center hidden lines, up to the miter, make a, make a turn, um, you can see hidden center hidden, hidden center hidden. It's the same two circles, they're just, they're doing their thing, they hit that miter line and went up to the top view. 
So those same two circles have that same pattern that we're used to. It looks like a hot mess, but hidden, center, hidden. Um, they do compete, the center lines compete with the edge of this top right here, this little cutout. So at a certain point, they're hidden, and then the visible line wins. The visible line's going to take over. Even if it's just for a part of that center line, it does take over. I think the rest of it's pretty straightforward, just projecting this up to the top. But you do see, in this case, this cutout, where it's visible, it, it, even if it's just for a short little period of time, uh, a short little area that that visible line does cover up the uh, center lines or hidden lines or anything because visible lines win. They're winners. Pretty straightforward. There's my hole. Project it down. Hidden. Center. Hidden. hidden. If you project that over to the miter line, drop it down. Hidden. Center. Hidden. Uh, the tricky part is that there are two different surfaces. These are longer, um, but this one is shorter up here. So projecting that, you've got hidden lines over here. It's kind of half hidden, half centered. It's uh, or half hidden, half visible. Definitely a little trickier in the side view of that one, I think. Y'all have questions about that one? <laughs> This one, yep, and I can see that. Yeah, and if you if you think of it, you know, when you're doing that, if you focus on what's visible, you've got the, these visible lines here that you would have drawn as visible, uh, and then you know this part over here was hanging out that's visible, and then you can work on putting your hidden lines in. But um, you know, you've got this little if you think of them as columns maybe or something. Uh, this column then this column, and then these two are on top of each other. This higher surface, I don't know if that helps at all. It's kind of hard, it's kind of hard to, do <laughs> to do this from a distance, but um, hopefully that helps a little, just focusing on the visible lines first and then figure out where hidden lines might be. This guy right here, this is the first time that we've seen what's called a counter bore. A counter bore, we're gonna deal with those We've got counter bores and counter sinks, and we will have a whole entire lesson all about that. But basically what's happening here is you've got two different holes that are being drilled through here. You have your little tiny hole that went all the way through. You've got a bigger diameter hole that is, um, it's a bigger diameter, but it only goes through a certain depth. It's, it's a visual, this is kind of an optical illusion when you're trying to figure out what that depth is, but I would say that depth is just a, a depth of one. Just goes, you know, it goes a really big hole, goes back a depth of one, and then there's a smaller hole that goes all the way through uh, a, a deeper depth. When we look at, I'm trying to think of what I have that I could show you. <laughs> Let's just do it this way. Ah, I keep being on the wrong layer, Ashley. All right, let's see. When I'm looking at that from this view, it would look kind of like this. I mean, don't worry that these things are not centered and whatever, but it would look like this. So I have a small hole drilled all the way through here. Then I have a bigger hole that is drilled through just a specific distance down, maybe in, our, in this case, just one. What that is designed for is this kind of situation. Let's pretend I have a bolt. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh my gosh, for somebody with my issues of OCD, this is not good. But let's pretend we have a bolt. This is terrible, I can't even. Okay, that's a little better. But let's pretend we have a bolt. If I were to put that bolt into something that only had a hole drilled through big enough for this, when I move that bolt into place, I'm assembling this part, the head of the bolt is sticking out. So if it has a mating part that needs to slide across the top right here, it's not going to work. It's going to hit that bolt head and it's not going to work. So what we can do here is, uh, 
a counter bore where it does a little bit deeper, but when I come in here, now my bolt sinks down in. So if it has a mating part that needs to slide over the top, it's, it's, it's not gonna have any friction. It's not gonna hit that head of the bolt. It just sinks down a little bit and gives it room for that. Do what? <laughs> my son is sitting right next to me watching this whole lecture and he pointed to this and he said it looks like a water bottle. <laughs> so there's that. Um, anyway, but that's what the counter bore is going to do for us, is when you see that, there's some kind of bolt or, you know, something that's going to fit in there that needs to be flush with that surface, the top surface. So when we're looking at this, same concept, when we look through here, we can see there's exactly what I drew. This is where you can see, it's upside down right now, but you can see where this would uh, go all the way through. It gives that bolt room to sink down in there. When you look at it from the top, it just looks like two circles. You know, from this view, it just looks like two concentric circles. I can't even tell. Uh, things that I would have done differently based on this, I would not have, I would have my center mark only stop a little bit past that circle. I don't think it needs to go all the way out. I disagree with that. Um, I think that you could make a good argument for the top, what is represented as the top. I think you could make a good argument for that being the front view. Uh, the reason that he did not choose it as the front view is because it's got a lot of hidden lines to it. So one other thing you need to think about is what best describes it and also best describes it with the fewest amount of um, center lines or hidden lines. Um, but I do think you could make a really good argument for this. So Sarah, to kind of get back to your question, and I know a few of you have had it, how do you know? Aside from the fact that in these particular ones we're pointing to it, there are several arguments that are, there's several objects that we're even going to do this semester that you could honestly make a good argument either way. There's a project when we get to chapter eight, I will take it two different ways. However you see it, I think you can make a good argument for which is the front view. So if that helps, uh, I don't know if that confused it more or helped it more, but um, just wanted to kind of show you that. Yeah, you didn't consider the arrow when making it. No, but I mean, if nobody said in those videos, if Doug didn't point out what that arrow is, then, then uh, yeah, how, how would you know? Uh, but now you know, like in the future ones, we're gonna say that based on this being the front view, now go draw the other views. Um, so, uh, let's see, I'm trying to get through, I want to make sure we have plenty of time to go through all of these. This one, again, there's our hole, it's got the center mark. <laughs> no, I'm glad, and I love that you guys are talking, this is so good, my other class does not talk. I have seriously considered inviting some of you guys to attend my Tuesday, Thursday class, just to get the conversation going. They literally say nothing, they don't ask questions, they don't type, they don't... <laughs> <laughs> like you guys just like hey sorry just joined your class and then just talk get them talking goodness uh all right so um anyway we've got project this over there's my hidden center hidden because it's a circle these guys you can see in this view they would project back and be center center <laughs> you guys are welcome i y'all are welcome to join all of you are welcome to join um so in the top view, I will say this, I disagree with this. Uh, he's got the center line going all the way through this thing. I disagree. If you notice here, that the, the circle, <laughs> I love it. Love you guys. Um, that circle right here only goes through this little skinny depth right there. So, um, you see how that, it doesn't go all the way through the whole thing. Because of that, I disagree with taking that center line all the way through the, the, the whole entire thing. That would just go right there through this part. Whew. All right. Oh my gosh, was that all of them? Hey, we did it. So there's all of them. Uh, you guys have this solution. You've got it as a PDF, so you could have looked at that. And I know that, you know, you can look at this and be like, oh, cool. Y'all are not submitting this to me for a grade. So it's not like, oh, I need to hurry up and do it and cheat and write down all the things. I want you guys to understand, and that's why I'm walking you through it. All right, dun, dun, dun. We're starting 2.2, and this is where we're going to get to your crazy number five in just a little bit.
Um, hopefully these are just going to go a little bit faster. Um, this guy right here, um, we have... <laughs> Y'all, I love my red pen. Am I lagging? Oh, I hope I'm not lagging, Saji. I'm sorry. I'm at my house, so I have good internet right now. So, and there is no, um, there there is no um, bad internet. I'm not competing with kids who are streaming things. So this is the best you're gonna get from me. Uh, all right, so we have concentric circle with arcs, and that again we've got they share that same center mark except it's a little bit shorter where it's the circle uh, just the circle side but you project those down to the front or the yeah front view so we've got that same pattern hidden center hidden hidden center hidden hidden here if you were to hit that miter line drop the circle down you see that same pattern the hidden center hidden i feel like this one uh is pretty easy of course i teach this for a living so maybe it's just me uh, this one's got a funky shape, and I know that some people try to feel like, oh, there's a cutout, so where do I put the center mark in there? No center mark. There's no circles there. We only have this center mark here, and that's the hole going through. That's the hole going through. So the rest of it, there are no center, um, uh, center lines. Um, and so hopefully you guys feel comfortable with that now. Just center lines are only for arcs and circles. Uh, let's see. There we got a hole, so we project it down. Hidden center hidden in both of those views. We've got it here. It projects over hidden center, but it's competing with a visible line, so that visible line one. Project it up. We've got my hidden center now is competing with a visible line, so I'm going to kind of skip over and go to that. Um, this one, um, I feel like it's I mean, maybe it's just me. I feel like this one's pretty easy. We've only got the one hole, uh, one circle going through here. So one tunnel and uh, we've got it here represented in those views. And the rest of this is just figuring out where those visible lines are in the top view. It's a little different, but once you get that, that top view of it, um, you can kind of visualize it a little easier. It does give you, uh, I think the did the book no the book did not give you that but just so you can see kind of a 3d image here um, you'll see that in your solutions oh my gosh here we go y'all this is the one that everybody um really <laughs> struggles with i think um so this one pretty straightforward i wish there was a way to make this bigger oh look at me making it bigger yes uh, so in this view right here, we've got this little slot, this little cutout um, that's going through here. I feel like that one's pretty straightforward. We can tell it comes through. There's an arc. So that arc gets its own little center mark. We project that down. You can see the edge. There's my hidden and there's my center. There's no other hidden. It's not a circle. It's a slot going through there. The confusing thing about this is why do I have that extra center mark? What the hell is that doing? It is on the same line. So when I see it here, at least in the front view, it's sharing that center mark. The reason that you have it is this, look, that's an arc. There is a giant arc on that corner. It's easy to overlook because it's such a big arc we call this in AutoCAD, there's a command called fillet, F-I-L-L-E-T, uh, not fillet, fillet, but this is a fillet in the corner. It's hard to tell, especially because somebody took a little bite out of it, but yeah, that is what it is. So we've got this arc, it has its own center mark, and this because this arc is so big, uh, the arc is, the center mark of the arc is way back so it is you know way back here if this arc has you know a radius of two then that center mark is out there that far back so that is that is that you'll get used to this but the bite out of it i think the fact that it is so big and then that little bite taken out of it is what throws people off totally and i love that you guys are talking about this and all of you together are collectively acknowledging <laughs> 
it is hard to see that one. So I, I like that you guys are, are having this discussion amongst yourselves. Question, yeah. Um, what, what, are you talking in the top view? This guy right here? It is actually the center of the arc though. So an arc has an arc has a radius and from the center, the radius is the same going this direction, this direction, all points along. Uh, that's what that radius is. So to actually draw this arc, the arc kind of starts here and then here. You notice how it goes to a straight line after that. So you can see where that arc is. And when you're drawing that, that arc to get to the center, it is actually, it's a two, it's a radius of two. So you count two grid lines in, two grid lines in, and it would be exactly right there. It throws you off. Um, and Kevin, I see your comment that you think the top view could be the front view. I 1000% agree with you. So I, and so y'all are going to see, like, as you go through this right now, we're pointing uh, to what we are going to tell you we want you to draw as the front view. But y'all can see as we go through this, I 100% acknowledge, like, there are, you could make a really good argument for which view is the top view. And honestly, there's some cases where um, uh, two different students will draw it two different ways and I'm not going to count off points. If you can make a good argument for why you would choose one as the top view versus the other, um, I, I'm, I'm all for that. So uh, I would agree with you. If I were drawing this, I would, I would say you've got a really good argument for the top being the uh, what, what is right now the top being the primary, most descriptive view? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh -huh. Oh, right here? Right here? Yeah, that's a good question. The reason that they're visible is when you're looking at this, that is actually a corner. It's an actual visible edge. So it's competing with, there would be a hidden line there as well, but because the visible lines and the hidden lines are competing with each other, um, you know, when you're looking at this, you know, looking at this view, if we were to hold that object, you would be able to reach out and touch a hard, crisp line right here. This goes perfectly straight right here and here up until it turns into an arc. So because of that, you would have, it's a hidden line for that arc competing with a visible line for the straight part of it and for that corner. <clears throat> uh -huh. And Kevin, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that is what a, uh, I'm reading your comment that you were taught in another class, that the front view is always the view that gives the most detail. And, and I agree with that. That's, that's, that's how we're teaching it as well. Um, this, I, I think you could make an argument either way. I think the reason that they gave this uh, as the front view is we, in this top view, you're not seeing any of the slopes. And so they're choosing that view because it does show that slope with a bunch of visible lines. You do see that there is something going on behind the line, behind the, the scenes. You can tell it's not a circle or a hole being drilled through here because there's not hidden center hidden there you know we're missing one of those hidden lines so there's obviously an arc or something going on here um <clears throat> so uh this is really one you could make an argument either way for which one would be uh, <clears throat> i can see the argument for what they chose as the front view but i can absolutely see the argument for the other one uh what is now the top view being the front view All right. Do are, do we have more questions about this one? Because I know this is the this is the big the big bad guy that we were uh, uh, everybody was was talking about. Oh wait, what is Justin's comment on the left side view? What is the left center line showing us? This left center line is this guy, the the center mark that we all hate. <laughs> if you project that over, 
to the miter, oops, if you project that over to the miter line and drop it down, there it is. So I've got a center mark here and a center mark here that we're showing as center lines here and here. Does that make sense? We've got two different center marks. And so in this view, in this view, they line up with each other. So they share one because they're all on the same line. But in the side view, we see two different center um, lines projected. Did that answer your question, Justin? Okay, very good. Do you guys have any other questions about this guy? Are you ready to move on? Yeah, even if you don't see the arc from the side view, you it was brutal, I agree. Uh, even if you don't see the arc from that side view, the it's still there. You're just not seeing it because it's smooth. Even if we did not have that little bite taken out of it, you would not see that arc from the side view or the front view, really. You would only see it from that top view, but that doesn't mean it's not there. You still have to project over that center line. And looking at this, the viewer is like, oh, well, there's something. I see a center line, so there's something round happening. Let me go check out that top view and see what it is. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, lots of stuff going on here. Let's see if we can zoom into this. Um, I'm not going to answer that one, Sarah. Um, let's see. Uh, here we have, here we've got fillets again. So remember the fillet is that round uh, edge right here. Each of those has its own center mark. It's exactly what was happening here. It's just the center mark was way back. Um, so we've got two different center marks for those fillets. Project that down. I've got center lines. There's no hole or anything, so there's no hidden lines to go with that. I've just represented it with center lines. I have this one that curves into it. It's kind of like an opposite of a fillet. It's curving into the object instead of curving out of the object. And uh, that one we call a round. We still, when we're doing it in AutoCAD, we would still use the fillet command for this, but these are called rounds where it comes into the object. So we've got the same way we would have a center mark on a, on a fillet, we would have a center mark on a round. If they're tiny rounds, you might not have it. Sometimes you see those uh, with center marks, if they're really tiny, just these little tiny rounds right there, you'll just put a note. Um, you'll just, uh, for, these, for these tiny rounds, you would just put a note saying all rounds are 0.5, you know, uh, diameter or radius or whatever. Um, Sarah, to answer your question, you're saying why does this round come all the way through down here? It doesn't. I have this one is projecting down. They just happen to be lined up right with each other. So I've got my fillet is down here, just the way the fillet is here, but I've also got a round. So the lines just kind of blend into each other. Um, projecting these into the side view, we, we've got this, the little, the little chomp out the little bite here comes over he's got his own hidden line um, and then we've got the circle so hidden center hidden hidden center hidden we project that over uh, let's see this round right here projects up so kind of a similar thing uh, to Sarah what you were saying why does this look like it's just bleeding down into this it looks like this is bleeding up into that but it is still it's that round is being de depicted in the top view with a center line right next to where this is a center mark here. One question that a lot of people have on this one is if I've got a cur smooth curve here and then a smooth curve here, why do we have a visible line right here? Um, because normally if we had, you know, I don't know how to do this without drawing, but if we had, you know, a smooth curve and then a smooth curve, you would not you would not have a visible line. But if you look at this, yeah, Sarah, you got it. It's because it goes flat. We do have this one little section right here where it's a perfectly vertical line. Because we have that perfectly vertical line, that goes right here. Except when it's done, see how it just kind of ends? It just stops and it's gone. There's no hard edge where it stops. So there's nothing to project up here other than the center line for that. 
the circle we've got hidden, center, hidden, and then two visible lines for this little cutout right there. Holy moly, this guy, I don't know if you guys have ever read the book, Mr. Silly. Um, <laughs> it was my favorite book as a kid. I had it for my for my daughter. We read it all the time. Mr. Silly lives in a house that looks kind of like this. <laughs> um, but uh, it's like it's a thing. Miss Little Miss Sunshine and Mr. Silly, like they each had their own little book. Um, but uh, anyway, so this is Mr. Silly's house in my head. Um, I believe again disagreeing with what we would consider the front view. I think this is much more descriptive. You can see that this is crazy. You can see holes going through there. You can see that it's wonky and it's weird and it's Mr. Silly's house. Um, I would I would argue there's a whole lot less hidden lines going through this one. I would definitely argue for this being the front view. And I hope that helps you guys understand. We're just giving you an arrow and pointing to which one we, we're gonna tell you to draw as the front view. But I love that you guys are arguing with this and disagreeing. That is good. That's using your critical thinking skills. And I and I want that. I, I welcome that. Uh, I still want you to draw it the way we told you to, but <laughs> I like that you are uh, thinking outside of the box and really trying to apply what you're what you're thinking, uh, what you're seeing, the stuff that you're learning. I like that you're applying that. So based on this, we've got all of our visible lines. These are all pretty straightforward. It's got that lot of little uh, angle to it so there's this line right here angles as as hard as it is um you you want to draw it so that it looks like it's at an angle um but it, it's really it's just going to look like a rectangle it's just going to be flat it's foreshortened in uh, but we have the circles we project those over We've got hidden, center, hidden, this circle, hidden, center, hidden. It really starts to be a lot less complicated once you figure out those circle patterns. We've got a little arc dipping through here. Well, it's visible right here, so we aren't going to project that center line at all. But the arc, we're just going to bring that over, do, 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 just little hidden lines. It doesn't go all the way through. We can see that stops right there. So we've got a little hidden line showing where it stops. Top view, uh, same thing. If this is the if this is the front, we've got we can show the slope here. We can see uh, the the uh, hidden center hidden except this center line right here competes with this line down here. So we lost the center line because the hidden line won. But this circle here, if we were to project that up, hit the miter line, project it over, we've got hidden center hidden. Um, We've got the, the little dip, the little channel taken out of here, so that's visible here, and then we've got a center line. So um, it's, it's a hot mess, I totally agree, but when you break it down, there's really not anything new or hard or, or anything about this. It's just a lot of crazy lines all at once. Um, this one... I don't know, I feel like we start, they, they start to get kind of, even though they're getting technically harder, is a crazy thing. Once you get those concepts, there's my arc. So project it over. I cannot see the center line. I do see the hidden line. I project up here. I see a hidden or center line, two visible lines, this little cutout. I feel like this is pretty straightforward. Nothing too crazy about it, even though it's like a crazy Um, let's see, this guy right here, this is the last one. So we've got our two circles up here, project that down, hidden, center, hidden, hidden, center, hidden, project it into the side view, hidden, center, hidden. You see that pattern just going over and over and over again. Uh, this little triangle, little peak right here, it just looks like a visible line right there, but you can see what's going on here. You can see this little peak, this little triangle channel that's going through here. And so for a little bit, it's competing with a visible line. So it's a little bit visible and then it just continues on as being hidden. So now uh, we have the base of the triangle. That's all the time that the triangle is. That's all the time that the triangle is. 
Uh, which view are we in? Where, are you in the top view? Oh. Yeah, well, that's just showing like we would normally, if we were just looking at the front view of this, we wouldn't see anything at all. But we do know that, you know, based on, you know, know about the subject, it goes back a depth of one. So behind the scenes, there's an edge right here. Uh, there, there would normally be a hit or, a, you know, a visible line all the way. If this triangle weren't here, we would have a visible line all the way through there. That triangle's blocking part of it. So you're kind of seeing just behind the triangles. Yeah, and that triangle's covering up the rest of how it's solid. All right, that's all of the ones that you guys had. Do you have any questions for me? All right, I'm gonna pull up Blackboard and uh, I gotta log into it first. Wait for it. Um, let's see, Blackboard, my class. <laughs> I feel like almost every instructor, look at my courses in ACC. <laughs> this is all just this semester. I have to hunt for which one is my section. Y'all are one three, so we click here, but everybody has me added their Blackboard because I'm I'm the Blackboard diva in our department. I'm, I'm you know, I'm kind of awesome that way, but <laughs> that means I have to like sift to find my class. Um, yeah, well, I sent it, I sent, now I sent this out to every 1405 class the other day and I sent it as an announcement and I also sent it as an email and that is actually what I was about to show you. I was not showing it like telling you come. Y'all are welcome to come and spice it up a little. They could certainly use it. Um, but uh, uh, I wanted to show you this. So if you go to announcements, I also sent this as an email, but anytime I send out an email, I also put it as an announcement. That way you don't have to hunt through emails and find things. But let me come in here and put it into your view so it's not as messy. But attend another section this is I, mean, I would have talked to you about this uh, regardless but this is every one of our sections of 1405 <laughs> um this is uh 1405 every section that we have so you can see i teach 9 a.m monday through friday so same time or not not friday no my god i do not teach on fridays thank goodness monday through thursday i teach at nine o'clock right after our class at 10 40. There's another class. Doug Smith helped. He, he this is his book. We both go off through this book. Um, but Doug Smith teaches four days a week, right after my class his section. If you miss my class, you have a doctor's appointment or something like that. We are going to try to keep completely everybody the whole entire semester, all of our classes on the exact same schedule. All of our lectures are different. If you want to hear how other people present things. I, I, I welcome you to do that because I definitely have my own teaching style. We all have our own teaching styles. You might find another style works better for you. Um, Mondays and Wednesdays, we have a late class. So 730 at night to 910 at night. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have a, a class like Doug's class is, ends at 1240. Jeffrey's class starts at one o'clock. Jeffrey is the civil coordinator. So he is... Uh, <clears throat> faculty member. He's civil. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, Daryl also teaches it at 540 p.m. So uh, you guys are welcome to join any of those classes. Normally we would, because we've got this week that we're going to be working on chapter two, next week, next class period starting next week, we're going to start AutoCAD. However, Monday is Labor Day. So normally what would happen is, as of that point, right now, Monday, Wednesday classes are ahead of Tuesday, Thursday classes. Because Monday becomes before Tuesday. In a normal semester, after Labor Day, it's switched up and the Tuesday, Thursday classes are ahead. So in a normal semester, Tuesday, we're closed Monday, we don't have class. Uh, Tuesday, they would jump into AutoCAD and then we would be behind them. Um, we had... Yeah, no class Monday. Go enjoy. Uh, 
nothing, nothing at all. You guys go do your thing. Uh, but we, we had a meeting last at the end of last week, and we've decided we want the Tuesday, Thursday class to hold off and not jump into AutoCAD. So it's going to be more like just a work day for those classes. So Wednesday of next week is when we're going to start Chapter 5. Um, Wednesday of next week is when we're going to start Chapter 5, and then Thursday, those classes will start. Oh my gosh, not Chapter 5. Man, 4, AutoCAD. <laughs> I'm not going to jump into Chapter 5, I promise. Um, anyway, so if you have to miss for any reason, if you, um, I, I don't know, you, you, you need to hear a lecture again or you want to pop in or whatever, you guys are welcome to do. You Here's the links. You just jump into anybody's class meeting. Those are those times. If you want to crash my 9 a.m. class, I am not going to argue with that. So <laughs> um, you, I'm not telling you you have to. That's weird. I'm not telling you to do that. Uh, <laughs> I do love y'all's energy though. Um, let's see. Oh, other things. You can also watch our class recording. You guys know by now, hopefully everything that I do in class, I'm recording these lectures and they go right up. So you can always rewatch our class lectures. If you have to miss, you can attend another section. Just watch the recording. Our tutors are going to start soon um, or schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. Um, I love my classes have really been active on Google Hangouts, just popping in, asking me questions, checking in. Hey, what do we need to do by Monday? I love that. I welcome that. And literally, like, some of you, I have replied just because it pops up on my phone. I'm just sitting on my phone doing whatever. It pops up and I'll send you a quick reply. I reply to people over the weekend, sometimes late at night over the weekend. Um, no guarantee that I always will, but if I'm on my phone and I can just send a quick answer back, I will. And so I welcome that. I have sent each one of you a, a, an invite to the Google Meet, so look for that. If you tend to be a phone person, download Google Hangouts on your phone. And you can chat that way. It is a, those of you who have used it, hopefully know by now, I am so totally accessible to you. I am sitting at my computer all day long and we can chat. Sarah and I chat like all day, some days. She's sitting in traffic. Really, she should not be texting and driving, but seriously. <laughs> um, if you have questions or anything at all, pop in and ask. So I sent that to all the classes, but I do want you guys to know that. I am accessible. I'm available to you guys. Um, I want you to know that. So now I'm going to read the comments. You guys, Justin, you mentioned extra credit. If we want to practice more, would you be willing to accept 2.3 through 2.6 for credit? Um, I love that you want to do extra credit, Justin. However, 2.3 to 4. 6.6 are going to be assigned to you. <laughs> so at the end of today, um, I'm going to come in here. Let me turn this off. Your homework between now and next class period is we're going to come into chapter two. I'm about to make this available to you. Look, 2.1 and 2.2. I'm going to make this available and then that one. So today your homework is, uh, say make available. Today your homework is now you guys have walked you through it, y'all are going to do 2.3, 2.4. Next class period, so Wednesday, your weekend homework is going to be to finish off 2.5 and 2.6. So um, what I will give you extra credit for, Justin and all of you guys, is when you're done with this, I would wait till you're done. We are not going to do chapter three. We're going to skip over that. I'm going to assign over the weekend that you watch the videos for it you are welcome to do the chapter three projects and I love giving extra credit. So if you wanna do that and if you have a way to scan it in or take a picture <clears throat> and send it to me, absolutely I will. Um, okay, let me read through these. Yeah. Yeah, so you can just email me the extra credit. All of the rest of the projects, like you said, you're going to submit. There's a link once we get to that part and it's time to submit your projects. There's a link in Blackboard that you'll submit it through. I don't have a link for anything in Chapter 3, so just email it to me. And email whatever, if it's a JPEG or scan it in, a PDF, however you want to do it, as long as I can see it. Um, you, it's not at all required. I'm not expecting this. If we were in class, we would be doing it. The thing is, um, you're going to have to have a scale for that one. Um, I don't know if a ruler would work for that. 
So I think that for me is like the, the biggest reason of maybe you wouldn't, you can go to Office Depot and get a scale. You can go to Miller Blueprint and get a scale. Uh, Jerry's Artorama, you can go there and get a scale. You can order one on Amazon. So if that's something you decide to do, shoot me a message and I can send you maybe an Amazon link to the kind of scale to get. They generally cost maybe $10. For a scale, they're good to have if you're taking future classes. Uh, I know, Lindsay, your your IC layout, so you you won't be required. Yeah, because it's not really like it's for me personally. Yeah. The talent aspect is is I found the hardest thing to do. Yeah. And hopefully that'll get. <laughs> and hopefully that'll get easier for you. I totally get that. Hopefully it'll be easier for you. The more we do it, the more it uh, kind of comes to you. But yeah, like I said, IC layout, you gotta be wired a certain way and it sounds like you are and that way might not be wired to do from you top view to side view because that's totally not what you're gonna be doing in your industry. So yeah, um, all right. So, but if you want to, shoot me a message and I can tell you how you can get that to me, uh, um, how to, you know, get those, uh, tools or whatever it is that you might need. Um, read through these. Oh, hold on. You know what I need to do is okay. Um, okay, let's see. You have to All right, I'm reading you guys, uh, your comments now because I got behind on those. I know, Sarah, I need to be worse about replying on weekends. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you want to do yeah. And that was actually me taking the weekend off. I don't know when or whatever. I, we, I was with my boyfriend in Fredericksburg and we were going to wineries and I, we were having a, we went to Lukenbach and we were having a great day. I, I, don't, I don't know at what point I replied, but it must have been a quick message that was an easy yes or no. Um, I love that you guys do what? <laughs> I have, I, I yeah, I, I, I love I love communicating with my students and I hope you guys know that. All right, so it sounds like this is it and it's 1039, our class ends at 1040, so we timed this very well. I hope that I was able to answer your questions. I hope that this feels a little bit better for you moving into the next two sketching sheets. Uh, I do think if you were struggling with it before, the more you do it, the more second nature this is gonna be. Uh, it'll obviously help now that you know what those arrows mean. <laughs> so you don't have to stress out about which one the front view is. Um, and hopefully I help with center marks at least, kind of understanding um, what, what to do there. So um, yeah, we will uh, come in here and um, do this on, let's see, Wednesday we're gonna pop in and Wednesday is gonna be exactly this, I will answer the questions. We might move through them a little bit quicker because I don't have to introduce you to the concepts of uh, center lines and all of that. Um, reading your messages. None of these exercises, Kevin, we're not going to hand in any of these exercises. Uh, these are all for you to practice and get down these skills because going forward, this is exactly what we're going to be doing is front view, top view, side view, side view. So you're not going to hand them in for a grade. Even if we were in person, you wouldn't hand them in for a grade. Um, you can check yourself against the PDF. I will, like I did today, I'll go over the answers. Um, but we're going to do 2.3, 2.4 today uh, for homework. And then Wednesday, you're going to do 2.5, 2.6. So you're going to end up sketching all six of these pages. Um, oh my gosh, y'all are chatting so much. Do Yeah. 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 So in uh, in our Blackboard, you can go up here to announcements. I'm going to turn off. Turn off view. 
You're going to go to click on the word announcements. Everything that I send out to you guys, so I sent out an announcement just kind of recapping what I was expecting you guys to do today and what your deadlines are. And then this one right here is the email. This went to all 1405 classes. Is that good, Sarah? Is this what you wanted to see? Was this one? I would love it if you would. And yeah, the, it, I do have a different Google Meet for each one of my classes. So, but there's everybody's Google Meet right there. So y'all are welcome to join any, y'all are welcome to crash anybody's class. Um, you just click, and these are, these are clickable. So you can just click. If you click on these classes right now, nothing's going to happen. But if you click on those during the class period, you'll hop into their class meeting. Patricia, I love that dog. It's very pretty. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Well, class is over, guys. I'm going to read through these comments and see. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so it looks like that was it. Um, I do want to take your attendance. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen and um, I'm going to stop recording.